and welcome to RiscOS Direct, the information and tutorial series all about the RiscOS operating system for the Raspberry Pi. In the previous video, we went over the user interface and customization elements of your new RiscOS Direct system. So going forward, we'll assume you're fully up to speed with the series so far and have a version of RiscOS Direct running on your Raspberry Pi. Today we're going to look at the unique world of RiscOS gaming and system emulation, including the many surprising things RiscOS can run, such as versions of retro games and software not normally available on more common gaming and emulator platforms, such as RetroPie. We'll start with modern games or classic games that have been ported over to newer hardware. These kind of apps run natively on RiscOS and don't require any emulators or patches. A selection of games and other entertainment utilities can be found in the diversions folder or directory on the SD card. Inside you'll find a number of stock classics such as Meteors, a clone of Asteroids, which will open in a new window, and Hopper, a full screen 32-bit version of the classic Frogger arcade game. This game in particular takes full advantage of RiscOS's sound and rich colour capabilities. RiscOS Direct also comes with a free shareware version of the 1993 first-person shooter Doom, with the first story .wad or wad file pre-installed. Like many RiscOS applications, Doom will load into a standby mode with its icon appearing on the right of the icon bar. Middle scroll wheel clicking this icon will produce a submenu from where the game options can be configured and set. This menu is also used to fully quit the game. To launch, left click the Doom icon bar icon. Additional .wad or wad files can be purchased from various software vendors. These files are placed inside the Doom Pling file by holding down the shift key and double left clicking the window app icon. This opens the Pling file resources. Left clicking the AlWADS folder will reveal the installed WWAD files. Additional files can be left clicked and dragged into this folder location to be added to the game. Two new additions to the Diversions games lineup are Overlord and Mutant Penguin. These are new games written entirely in BBC Basic and created by Anthony Bartram of Amcog Games. Both launch by left double clicking their respective plings and following the on screen instructions. And show what a new developer or programmer can do with RiskOS Direct running on a Raspberry Pi. Like with Doom, the app plings for these games can be opened by holding down the shift key and left double clicking the pling icon. As these games are written in BBC Basic, they are not compiled, meaning the raw source code is still present and can be opened and read. Like with the pling, holding down the shift key and double left clicking any of the resources, such as these basic files, will display the code in an editor. Normal double clicking of a basic file will run the code or program it contains. Back in the first video, I talked about the origins of RiscOS and how it's essentially built on the 8-bit BBC Micro platform. With that being said, a common question I'm asked is, can RiscOS still run BBC Micro software and most importantly, games? Well, the answer is kind of yes and no. Let me explain. RiscOS Direct comes with a modernized 32-bit version of BBC Basic that runs natively on the Raspberry Pi. It can use the bulk of the Pi's available memory or RAM and programs can run at the Pi's native processor speeds. If you had a game that used BBC Basic, say a type and listing from a magazine or book from the 1980s, the bulk of the BBC Micro Basic code would run without modification under RiscOS Direct. A good example of this is The Mystery of Silver Mountain, 
a type in text adventure published in the UK by Osborne Books, for which the original BBC Micro Basic code listed works without modification under Risk Arrest Direct. So we know that type in listings will in most cases work, but what about commercial BBC Micro games and software? Well, most games for the Veteran 8-bit system were written in 6502 Assembler and not BASIC. The 6502 is the main 8-bit central processor chip that powers the BBC Micro. Code known as Assembler written for this chip is not directly compatible with other processors such as the ARM CPU that powers the Raspberry Pi. This means most 8-bit BBC Micro software can't run natively on 32-bit RISC-RS Direct. However, RISC-RS Direct comes with a solution to solve this problem. You'll find a folder or directory located on the main SD card called Emulators. Inside is a selection of pre-installed and fully set up emulator programs covering a wide selection of platforms from the 8 and 16-bit eras. In the Acorn 8-bit folder, we are presented with a Pling app called BeepIt. This is a BBC Micro 8-bit 6502 emulator and will allow us to run 95% of BBC Micro software and games. If we double click the BeBit Pling app, it will load into standby mode in the lower right hand side of the icon bar. Left double clicking this icon once will launch a BBC Micro session with the familiar beep sound. BeBit creates a virtual 6502 processor and RAM allowing for retro BBC Micro software to run correctly on the Raspberry Pi. The risk -S Direct desktop can be brought up again by pressing the F12 key at any time, remembering that BeBit will continue to run in the background. During the 1980s, most BBC Micro software was stored and sold on these 5 and a quarter inch floppy disks. Like most emulators, BeBit expects digital versions of these disks known as .ssd files. Ideally, you would need a bridge PC computer with a 5 quarter inch drive and third-party software to make digital copies of the original disks. Luckily, a large number of software authors have done the hard work for you and made digital versions in .ssd format available for download for free from various websites. If your risk arrest direct system is connected to the internet, then first open NetSurf by left double clicking its icon from the pinboard. Next, left click the NetSurf icon that appears on the right side of the icon bar. This will produce a new NetSurf browser window. We can now do a quick search by left clicking once the search text box and typing in Ian Bow Elite, followed by pressing the return or enter key or by left clicking the Google search button. Ian Bow's personal website normally comes up as the first or second listing which we can left click to visit. If we now left click the published elites hypertext link and then the BBC elites link we'll be presented with a page of downloads. We'll left click the first download link. Under NetSurf this will show a window with the download progress. Once the file is complete, it can be left clicked and dragged from the window to a space within your risk arrest direct environment, such as the BBIT directory window. But remember, you can't save files to the desktop or pinboard area. Once the file is saved, we can close the downloads window and NetSurf, remembering to middle or scroll wheel click its icon bar icon and left clicking the quit menu option. Our download will show as a zip file. This can be extracted by left double clicking it. Then from the window that appears, left click and drag the disk image file back to the BBIT folder. This file is nearly ready to use, we just need to set the file type. To do this, middle or scroll wheel click the disk image file icon. From the sub menu, move the cursor or pointer to the file type option. Then without clicking, move the mouse to the right so that a text box appears. Press backspace to remove the text and then type DFS image, followed by pressing the enter or return key. 
you should see the disc image icon change to that of an old style 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk. If BBIT is still open with its icon on the lower icon bar, left click and drag the disk image icon over to the BBIT OWL icon and drop it on top. This will launch BBIT entering full screen. Now hold down the shift key and press break or pause on your keyboard before releasing both keys. This should launch your SSD disk image, in our case the Elite Disk we have just downloaded. And as you can see we can now play this BBC Micro Classic. During the first edition of RiskOS Direct we also talked about the early RiskOS builds that ran on the Acorn Archimedes, the world's first commercial ARM based PC computer. During this period, a large number of popular AAA games were ported over to the RiskOS platform. Most modern RiskOS builds, such as RiskOS Direct, will in most cases recognize these file types as native system applications. However, if you try to open one of these, 9 times out of 10, it will fail to run. Like with the BBC Micro, RiskOS Direct comes preloaded with a solution. Back under our emulators folder, we can left double click on the Acorn 26-bit folder or directory. Within this window, we can see two cling icons. The Acorn Drive icon opens a special space where we can place files and apps that we need to open in 26-bit mode. From Ian Bao's website, shown earlier, I also downloaded the Archimedes build of Elite. Dragging the downloaded zip file into the Acorn 26-bit window space. We can now double left click the zip and left click and drag the Elite Disk Image file into the Acorn Drive space. As with the BBC Micro SSD files, the Archimedes disk images need their file format changing by middle clicking the file icon, moving the pointer without clicking over to the left of the file type option and then typing floppy into the text box. Pressing return or enter on the keyboard, you will notice the disk image file now changes. Unlike with the BBC Micro emulation, we can now leave this file in the Acorn Drive directory and instead double left click the Acorn mode pling. This will boot the RiskOS version 3.11 ROM and OS included in RiskOS Direct turning your Raspberry Pi into a 26-bit compatible Acorn Archimedes. RiskOS 3.11 works in much the same way as RiskOS Direct. Just being a product of the early 1990s, it may look a little more retro in style and presentation. We can now extract the contents of this disk image by left double-clicking the Apps folder and left double-clicking the ADFFS Pling icon. This will produce an icon on the lower left of the icon bar. If we left click and drag our elite disk image over to this icon, it will open the contents of the disk image in a new window. We can now copy by left clicking and dragging the icons from the window to another. Or for this demonstration, we'll simply double left click the elite plink to launch. Remembering that Elite opens in standby mode, so needs to be started by left clicking the Elite Shield icon that appears on the lower right of the icon bar. The RiskOS 3.11 environment supplied with your RiskOS Direct distribution already has a number of classic commercial game titles pre installed for your enjoyment. These can be found in the games folder or directory and cover a number of genres. These are mostly ports as seen on other 16-bit era systems of the time. However, the Acorn Archimedes ports of these games tend to be some of the best and as already mentioned these are not natively supported by popular third-party emulated gaming platforms such as RetroPie. Exiting games or software like that included is normally done by pressing the control and escape keys together or by pressing F12 on the keyboard. When you have finished your RiskOS 3.11 session, double left click the shutdown playing icon. This will return you to your RiskOS Direct 32-bit session that has remained running in the background for the duration. 
The RiskOS 26-bit environment isn't just useful for games. As it's a full RiskOS 3.11 system, it can be used to run any legacy Archimedes software that's not compatible with newer builds of the OS. Ideal for any legacy users looking to switch to cheaper and more reliable hardware such as the Raspberry Pi. Finally, let's take a brief look at the oddly named Scum VM. This can be found back in the diversions folder as it's technically not an emulator. Scum VM acts like a sort of virtual machine with a number of drivers and front end code enabling it to run selected PC multimedia titles regardless of the host platform. In this example, I have the PC Windows version of the classic 1993 click and point adventure game Myst. This Windows copy can be made to work on RiskOS first by copying all the CD disk data into a folder on a Mac or PC. Then, using a FAT or FAT32 formatted USB stick, transfer the data over to your Pi. RiskOS Direct can read and mount PC FAT formatted drives such as USB sticks. A USB drive will appear in the lower left of the icon bar. Left clicking this icon once will display the drive's root directory. We can then simply left click and drag the MIST folder over to a location of our choice. For this demo, we'll use the main SD card directory. With the data now loaded into RiskOS Direct, we can open ScumVM by left double clicking its Pling icon. ScumVM has its own unique user interface, which is identical on the multiple platforms it supports. From the right side menu, left click the Add Game button. On the File Manager menu, find the MIST folder, then click Choose. Scum will attempt to decipher which game you have selected by the data it is presented with. It may produce a list of possible options, and in this case we want to choose MIST Masterpiece Edition. The game title will then show in the main menu screen. To launch, left click the MIST title, then left click the Start button. The game should launch and run natively on RiskOS Direct, including support for its full motion video and sound. The full list of supported Scum VM titles, as well as support and user documentation, can be found on the official website at www.scumvm.org. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of RiskOS Direct. We hope you found this insight into the world of gaming and emulation on the platform interesting and a viable alternative to some of the more well-known Pi distributions. If you've been inspired to download and try out the OS for yourself, you can download it for free from www.riskosdev.com forward slash direct. And if you're watching this video on the youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep channel, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Next time, we'll explore networking and online services from the RiskOS web browsers to online app stores and from SSH to FTP through to VNC and many more options and uses for RiskOS Direct.